unforgettable That's what you are Unforgettable Though near or far It's happening out and out before they've been inferring that the internet has the influence of Satan, but now they're just, you know, coming out of the dark and saying it outright. For example, Satan's influence is seen in many modern means of communications. Videos, movies, television, the internet, advertising, books, magazines, and newspapers. Yes, that's right. You know, only everything that you can get information from only every point of access that you have to the outside world apart from Watchtower's myopic biased viewpoints. Yes, that's right. If you read a magazine, a newspaper, a book, uh, watch television, m uh, movie, video, or access the internet, you are accessing Satan's influence. But not if you're reading Watchtower and Awake. That's the good news. The May 1st, 2000 marks the first mention of the internet in the Watchtower magazine, before it had only been in the Awake. The May 15th, 2000 Watchtower makes no time with associating the internet to too much knowledge. Too much knowledge. Is there su I mean, really, let's pause for a moment and think about this. Is there such a thing as too much knowledge? At what point in the researching and studying of the history of Watchtower Corporation and the teachings of Watchtower Corporation has one actually acquired too much knowledge? Does this explain the censoring of Watchtower information going back into their own databanks? Does this explain why Watchtower Corporation cordons off certain publications that they themselves produce and don't want you accessing them or referring to them? Might that explain it? I think so. What about you? The January 22, 2005 Watchtower outs Watchtower's Corporation's real concern with the internet. They say, because of listening to the devil and not rejecting his lies, the first human pair apostatized. That's kind of a misplaced word in the sentence. I, I watched our corporation. I feel as if you're trying to push an agenda. Is that what's going on here? I think so. They continue. So then, should we listen to apostates and listen, to read their literature or examine their websites on the internet? If we love God and the truth, we will not do so. We should not allow apostates into our homes or even greet them, for such actions would make us sharers in their wicked works. So again, Jehovah's Witnesses, if you didn't catch the first warning, if you're watching this video right now, you're sharing in my wicked works. I'm talking about Watchtower Corporation, and clearly, it doesn't matter what the content of my message is because it's bad. I'm a big, bad apostate. The elders have labeled me. That's right. They've labeled me. They've determined what's good and bad for you because you don't have the ability or the freedom to do that for, the, for yourself. You know, Watchtower actually is very accurate in calling you a sheep. Fit to wander whatever pasture is determined for you to be in. Fit to eat whatever food the so-called shepherd says is acceptable. Free to never question when the flock is mercilessly sheared. No, no, you're just a sheep. You wander your pastures, never having to think, never having to question, never having to decide where you want to go, always following behind the gatekeeper, but never determining whether the gatekeeper has your best interests at heart or not. Something to ponder. The Watchtower has recently, as 8-15-2011, continues to associate the internet with negativity. They say, internet search engines, Google anyone, might be compared to a legion of mushroom pickers who, are tire who tirelessly collect all types of mushrooms, edible as well as poisonous, 
throwing them into a single container and dishing them out for us to eat. Don't use Google, Jehovah's Witnesses. Don't use Yahoo. Don't use Bing. Don't use Ask.com or Jeeves if anyone still uses that. <laughs> yes, that's right. Internet search engines can be compared to a legion of mushroom pickers dishing out mushrooms both edible and poisonous. So it's better just not to partake of it at all. Right? Is that the implication that Watchtower is trying to establish? Maybe? I think so. In fact, as far as the bias of Watchtower Corporation, it's actually fairly evident. If you examine the roughly 2,000 times, uh, real quick, I can take a look. Yeah, but, no, actually, closer to 800. The 800 times that they have mentioned the internet in their uh, flagship publications, The Watchtower and Awake, of those 800 times, almost all of them associate the internet with something negative in the minds of Jehovah's Witnesses to try and steer you away from this great danger. But Watchtower Corporation is losing the battle. In fact, they've essentially admitted defeat by now transferring uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, or directing them rather, to the newly renovated JW.org. Watchtower can no longer deny that the world is quickly modernizing. Information is no longer primarily gathered from libraries and books and magazines, although those methods still do exist. Primarily, people access information through the internet. And so Watchtower finds themselves in a very interesting time in history. This, in my humble opinion, is a renaissance. A renaissance of how we access information, of how humanity learns. And the Renaissance men of our age are not the great political leaders. They're not the Barack Obamas or the George Bushes or the Bill Clintons or the Ronald Reagans. As much as we love some of those figureheads, the fact of the matter is they will dwindle away and be forgotten by history. But the Renaissance men, the people that will be remembered, are our great technological innovators. The Bill Gates of the world, the Steve Jobs of the world. These are the people who will be, who will be remembered for helping people access information at a level that has never been seen before. The common man can learn things that in times past they would have had to spend countless hours accessing in some far-off dusty bookshelf. But now they have it right at their fingertips, and Watchtower can't deny it. So at this crossroads, as I discussed in my previous video, Watchtower now has to make a decision. Will they continue to allow their members to access information solely from the books and publications, the paper-wasting, uh, gelatinous piles of filth that usually end up in the rubbish bin anyway, or will they go paperless? Will they choose the more economical and indeed viable route by sending their followers to the internet? And what are the, what, what exactly are the, uh, implications of such an action. Remember, I mean, they've, they've spent countless uh, man hours trying to associate the internet with something negative, with something derogatory, trying to paint it as something dangerous, something to be feared. But now they're sending their followers into its thralls. They're sending their precious flock just a few clicks away from videos such as mine, from videos such as propaganda techniques, from videos such as JW fairy tales, from countless other apostates. People whose only goal is to make the common man aware of the misdeeds of Watchtower Corporation. Does that spell long-term viability for the cult? I think not. And I think Watchtower realizes that the noose is quickly tightening around their proverbial necks. See, as people continue to access information, this information overload, what generally happens, and it's a societal trend, people begin to modernize. This access of ideas from all across the ideological spectrum balances out for most people. They, they see the extreme views on either side and take the middle ground. 
You know, Jehovah's Witnesses have long adopted a radical position. A radical position that, in this modern age, simply isn't selling any longer. And so the only choice that they have for their continued viability is to lighten the load upon Jehovah's Witnesses to make it easier to be a Jehovah's Witness. Something that I've noticed with my own peer group, the children of Jehovah's Witnesses are not proud to be such. And although they may by and large abide by the tenets set by Watchtower Corporation, such as not following or not celebrating birthdays or Christmas or other holidays, they will go to extraordinary lengths to not identify themselves as Jehovah's Witnesses. They will make ridiculous excuses to try and avoid mentioning that they're part of a kooky cult. That, oh, ah, damn, I gotta floss my walrus uh, there uh, on your birthday party. I'm sorry, Dave or Kenny or whatever the hell your name is. I can't come. Oh, Christmas, shit. My grandma's gonna die that day. I gotta go to her funeral, damn it. Ah, fuck, oh well. I mean, they're just, just ridiculous lengths not to identify themselves. Watchtower Corporation is slowly but surely boxing themselves in. They can't make the old predictions like they did about the apocalypse coming and being an impending threat to the members because, again, through the internet, people now have the means and motive to call them on their bullshit. They can't get away with it anymore. They can't say the crazy radical things like they used to be able to. They're already getting bit in the ass for some of the radical statements they've made in times past. You know, like, oh, forbidding organ transplants or, you know, forbidding blood fractions. Think about the countless numbers of deaths that Watchtower has caused as a result of those teachings, all now been brought into the light thanks to the internet. How many of us would have been aware of Watchtower's association with the United Nations were it not for the tool of the internet? This is something that Watchtower has to fear. And it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt their teachings to fit an increasingly technologically integrated world. But that's the extent of my thoughts for this evening. I hope you enjoyed them, and remember, as always, that life is just a state of mind. Good night. Some bright morning when this life is